Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, click hire us or the contact us link, fill out that information and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to compare the uh, Unify Switch 8 150 watt switch uh, against the newer Unify Enterprise 8 PoE switch. Now, they have similar but different uh, use cases. I did pay for all of this equipment myself, but I wanted to show you the Enterprise 8 PoE because that's what we're going to be using with our UXG when I release that video here in the next few days. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet and then uh, I will show you the uh, actual devices. So here we are. We've got the Unify Switch 8150 versus the Unify Enterprise 8 PoE. And as you can see on this screen, the devices are pretty different looking. I mean, they've got the SFPs and the RJ45 ports on, on the front and the reset button and some sort of ubiquity identifier. But other than that, the guts in the case are a little different. So let's get this out of the way. MSRP on the original Unify Switch 8 150 watt, which is still available when you can find it, just like everything else. There's a secondary market and there's supply chain issues and all kinds of stuff. So if you can find these, sometimes people are asking double the price. So MSRP on the original 8150 is 199 US dollars. And on the Unify Enterprise 8 PoE, it is 479 US dollars. Now, we're going to go right down the line here. So, Uni Unify Switch 8 has 8 1 gigabit um, RJ45 ports, and the Enterprise 8 has 8 2.5 gigabit ports. The 8150 has two SFP 1 gigabit ports, while the Enterprise 8 has two SFP plus 10 gigabit capable ports. The case on the original Unify uh, 8150 is metal, and on the Enterprise 8, it is a polycarbonate. And you're going to see that when we break these switches out. So I did list uh, some of this stuff in uh, not only Imperial, but um, uh, metric. So uh, the size is 9.25 by 1.69 by 8.03 inches. And the size of the Enterprise 8 is 7 by 9.8 by 1.7. So the size is, is kind of similar. You're going to see that uh, when we get these side by side here in a minute. The switching capacity of the 8150 is 20 gigabits. And the switching capacity of the Enterprise 8 PoE is 80 gigabits. Now, the next line is very important. And that is the non-blocking throughput, right? So we see the switching capacity. And then we see this other number that says non-blocking throughput. Well, what is non-blocking throughput? Basically, that's the bus, the switching bus, right? So while the switch has the capacity of 20 gigs, the actual non-blocking throughput or the amount of actual data that you can put through the backplane on that switch is 18 gigabits. On the Unify Enterprise 8, it has a capacity of 80 gigabits with non-blocking throughput of 40 gigabits. Now, all of these ports are full duplex, so that does mean that you can send and receive uh, on the copper ports, uh, you know, on the, the 1 gig copper ports would be 1 gig send and receive. That's what full duplex means. On the Enterprise 8, it would be 2.5 gigabits, and then your SFP ports would also be that way. But... In order to max these switches out, you'd have to have almost every port hitting enter and transferring that kind of data at the same time. And that is likely not going to happen where you're deploying these switches. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. I'm just saying it is not likely to happen. All right. The max power consumption of the 8150 is, not surprisingly, 150 watts. On the Enterprise 8 PoE, it also has a max power consumption of 150 watts. The PoE types supported on the Unify Switch 8150 are AF and AT at 32 watts per port. That's, that's the max, obviously, and uh, up to 57 volts. And then the Unify 8150 also supports 24-volt passive. The Enterprise 8 does not support 24-volt uh, passive, but it does support AF and AT, so standard PoE, 32 watts up to 57 volts per 
support. Now, this one has kind of been, I've seen people debating about this, but here's the number. And you can go check the, the, uh, the manufacturing sheets and do the math yourself, right? But the max PoE output for the Unify Switch 8 150 is 130 watts, and the max PoE output on the Enterprise 8 150 is 120 watts. So there's not that much difference there. Both of them feature uh, cooling, uh, passive cooling. There's no fans in either of these. And the um, form factor on both of these are is, is a desktop form factor, but the Enterprise 8 also comes with a wall mount and can be wall mounted. So you always see people trying to rack mount the 8150. And the way the cooling is set up, it's not really meant to be shoved in between other devices in a rack. So you need to be kind of careful when you're doing that. Uh, the Unify 8 150 does not do Layer 3. The Enterprise 8 PoE does the Unify uh, Switch Layer 3. The LED indicator, excuse me, on the Unify 8 150 watt is our standard blue ring. And on the Enterprise 8, it is the LCM touchscreen. The warranty on both devices, if you purchase them from Ubiquity directly, is two years. Operating temps on the Switch 8 150 are, is 23 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the Enterprise 8, it is 23 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, the operating humidity is 5 to 95% non-condensing on the Unify Switch 8 150 watt. And on the Enterprise 8 PoE, it is 10% to 90% non-condensing. All right, so now what you've been waiting for, I am going to show you first what comes in the box with the Unify Enterprise 8 PoE. So you get the switch. So here's the switch, and it also has uh, a mounting template. And this is actually attached to the switch in the box like that when it comes out. So this is the switch itself. And over here you can see we've got that LCM. It's covered up a little bit. We got our eight 2.5 gig ports and then we have our SFP plus, SFP plus ports there. Um, you can see that this thing is um, full of ridges and, and uh, it is polycarbonate. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there or not, kind of the, the venting there. And then on the bottom, you can see it's got rubber feet kind of built in, and then it's got our stuff for our wall mount, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. Um, and on the back is where you plug it in. They do have, they have this uh, they have this cover for the uh, where the power cable goes, but it just uses a standard like PC type power power cable, just like the other switch. Um, and I think this thing weighs about five pounds. So the uh, standard switch, as you're gonna see in a second, is a little bit lighter. Uh, I forgot to put that spec in there. They're light enough that it doesn't really matter too much. If two pounds is gonna make or break your uh, deployment, you should probably take a look at that. Here is the uh, wall mount itself. So you can see it's got the little plastic clips that uh, clip into the bottom of the switch there. You get uh, mounting hardware for that. And then you get these really nice looking Apple-esque uh, power, power cords. So I'm gonna put all this stuff back in there real quick and then uh, we'll go back to our blast from the past here. Yeah, this is considerably lighter. I think this comes in at three pounds and the new switch comes in at uh, five pounds. So you can see all the passive cooling holes all the way around this unit. And if you've ever had one of these apart, there's actually a block in here that uh, comes off of the motherboard and touches the case to dissipate the heat inside of here onto the case. So on the bottom of this switch, you can see it comes with the rubber feet because it is a desktop uh, format. On the front, we've got our, our blue ring. We've got our one gig ports and then our SFP ports. And of course, how could I forget the standard plug-in and the cable that came with this one is uh, black. Yeah, so five pounds on this one, three pounds on this one. And let's see what they look like stacked together. So you can see that they are very, very close in size. So I don't have them actually like lined up real good here. Okay, here we go. So. I mean, they are very, 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 very close. But 
uh, you know, everybody's going to have a use case or not have a use case for either, either of these devices, but we are pairing this Enterprise 8 with our UXG. So I wanted to show you these. If you've got any questions about the switches, ask them down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and uh, TikTok. Those links are down below. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon or by using our clearly marked affiliate links, those are all down below. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form, click hire us, and somebody will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.